So I mentioned in my introduction video on the channel that this channel is all about budget, home theater, and hi-fi as evidenced by the name of the channel. Um, but lately I've been uh, posting a lot of videos from Xpana which is obviously real high-end audio and uh, doesn't necessarily fit the bill on the channel's name and uh, mission. So I thought I would take a break from Xpona videos and um, take a tour of uh, uh, my uh, four systems essentially. My home theater, uh, my vintage hi-fi system, my modern-ish hi-fi system, and my uh, computer uh, speaker system. Um, they're all um, kind of budget for their own reasons and in each video I'll kind of get into in depth on the story behind each system. Um, I can go ahead and mention that I'm sort of a Marantz guy. Uh, I don't know why I picked up on Marantz. I think I just kind of fell in love with the vintage receivers. Uh, I found a good deal on um, a home theater receiver that I really like and um, that sort of got the ball rolling so then I ended up buying a more modern uh, hi-fi uh, stereo uh, amplifier, integrated amplifier that um, brings a lot of good value um, for a I guess mid-fi system. So I kind of wanted to walk you through all of my four systems and the first one that we're going to tackle today is the home theater. Um, this is very much a DIY home theater and I really put a lot of value into the DIY market because I think that uh, you can get some really great sounding uh, equipment uh, at bargain prices if you do some of the sweat equity yourself and um, that uh, that leads me to the first part of the home theater system in a minute I'll, uh, I'll yank these off the wall and show you and that is the the value buster subwoofer system the VBSS which is uh, you can find more information uh, on the AVS forums I'll put a link down below to the design thread it's hundreds of pages long but if you're interested in that uh, VBSS system all the information you need is right on the first page. Uh, so I'd encourage you to check that out if you're looking for a lot of bang for the buck from your subwoofers. Um, I'm going to try to include pricing on this and I don't have it all in the top of my head so probably what I'm going to do is add in a little uh, editing magic to give you the prices on what I paid for everything uh, so that you can get an idea of what a DIY system might set you back. Uh, the performance of the system is is really good. I get a lot of uh, really good comments on it. I have uh, I've been in a handful of other home theaters um, that cost uh, many times what I spent on my uh, equipment here, and um, there is it's like anything else in in stereos. You you can get a lot of bang for the buck, and then you can get better performance out of it, but the cost starts to go up exponentially. Uh, so if you make smart choices at the beginning, you can very well build a really good system for a really low dollar. And then you can upgrade over the years if you want, if you want to eke out little bits of performance. Um, I, I think uh, buying a, uh, a UMIC 1 from uh, Mini DSP is one of the best investments you can do in home theater because doing some measurements and optimizing the, sys the system that you have uh, can give you big gains for the cost of the microphone, which is not much, it's like $100. Um, anyway, so yeah, let me, uh, let me get started talking you through the system. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is this screen, and this is a DIY screen. Uh, it is 110 inches, so it's a, it's a good size. Um, <laughs> I uh, originally started off with a 90-inch uh, screen that was bought and um, decided I wanted it a little bit bigger and I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit more custom. Um, I'm sorry, it was like an 86-inch screen and it was uh, 
a roll down one. I didn't like how it looked. I wanted something a little bit more um, clean looking. Uh, and this, uh, I think, turned out really nicely. Uh, probably only cost me about $150 to build. I don't have those exact figures, but of course this was five years ago and wood has gone up quite a bit since then, but it's essentially just a wooden frame. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you a uh, still of the back of it right here. But it's essentially just a wooden frame uh, with uh, spandex. It's called uh, mill skin spandex. There's two layers of spandex over the frame. Uh, the, the first layer is black and then the second layer is white. And the black layer is meant to prevent any uh, color wash to go through the screen and then bounce back and then cause ghosting. Um, so uh, it's, I mean, it's not as high performance as a, uh, you know, $400 or more or $2,000 screen that you can get online. Um, but for what I paid for it, it's huge. It looks really good. It gives me the resolution that I'm happy with. Um, and uh, I have a light controlled room. I only have one window over in the basement. I only have one window and it's covered with a, uh, uh, a drape that it's a blackout drape. Um, so it doesn't need to be super incredibly bright in here to be able to see it real well. Um, I do occasionally have some issues with uh, the dark scenes in movies, um, but not bad. Uh, and that could be rectified with a more powerful projector too. Um, so that you know brings up the the uh, the topic of the projector. This is a uh, Epson Home Cinema 2030. It's about a I've had it about five years. I'm on my second bulb, and it's the second bulb is almost toast. Um, it's been a good projector for me, and I'm ready to move up. But that cost that cost me eight hundred dollars around Christmas time about five years ago. Uh, and it's like I said, it's been a good projector. Uh, but I am ready to step up. My next projector is probably going to be a uh, another Epson, um, one of the models that uh, has the shifting 4K. Um, some of the guys that uh, are really into projectors probably would uh, say a 4K projector is much better, and of course they're right, um, but they're also two or three times as expensive. And um, I've seen the shifting 4K projectors, and to me they look pretty good. And Epson's got a couple models. The one I'm looking at is about, I think, $1,200. Um, so I'm looking to make that upgrade here pretty soon. Um, and then we've got the bottom piece. And uh, the bottom piece is uh, just there to cover up the holes that I cut for the subwoofer. This is a very weird room. Um, uh, I don't have the dimensions on me. I'll post them right here. Um, but uh, there is a hallway behind here. It's a service hallway. And the, the, the furnace HVAC is right behind that Star Wars poster. Um, so that root that's and then on the other side of that is a bathroom. So that that space was kind of unused So they made like a whoever finished this basement made like a service hallway there for the HVAC and uh, I guess it's sort of a closet, but it's a through closet like there's a door on that end and then there's a door over here in the office So you can go all the way through it um, But that space was pretty pointless. So I cut holes in the wall so I could do um so I could do my speakers and electronics back there. Um, and it's an acoustically transparent screen, so they fire right through. And it sounds, it sounds fantastic. I'm so pleased. And you know, I've got upgrade-itis, I'm that, that type of person. I have no interest in upgrading the electronics or the speakers here. I'm just so happy with all of it. Um, I'm gonna take a moment to mention that uh, you can find a lot of really good deals in the used market if you know where to look. Um, these speakers, I'll go ahead and pull the screen off. These speakers are uh, DIY sound group. So they are DIY speakers, uh, but I bought them pre-built, used uh, from the forums, uh, from AVS forums, from the uh, classified ad section there. And I drove, uh, I drove three hours to meet the guy to pick them up. Um, but I paid uh, $750 for these three front speakers. 
and uh, they perform as well as a JBL or a QSC home theater speaker. I would put them up against those any day of the week. The model is uh, Fusion 12 from DIY Sound Group. And you'll see that I've got the uh, screen just kind of hung up on some Z clips here, so I can easily take it off. And I apologize, this looks a little bit, eh, a little bit sketchy, but you don't see it, so I didn't really care how it looked. And yes, if we sell the house, I'm gonna have some holes to fill. So yeah, these are, uh, like I said, the DIY Sound Group Fusion 12s. They are a two-way 12 inch with a um, SEOS waveguide tweeter, uh, compression tweeter. Um, big dynamics, uh, big sound, um, lots of capability as far as decibels go. Um, I can make this so loud that you would be uncomfortable and have to leave the room. Um, but not fatiguing, sound fantastic, especially for a home theater. Um, I don't typically listen to a lot of music on this system. Uh, it's not that these speakers don't sound good for music, they really do. Um, uh, very much like a Klipsch or something with uh, uh, high sensitivity and um, a lot of dynamic, um, a lot of dynamics between the low and the and the, the quiet and the loud uh, volumes. Um, they, they sound very good for music, but I find that with my receiver, uh, I have to tinker with a lot of settings to kind of switch back before between my settings for home theater and my settings for music. And I don't like doing that. I like to just um, sit down and enjoy. So I listen to most of my music on one of my uh, music systems, one of my two channel systems. And I just pretty much listen to home theater in here. But I do have like uh, Hans Zimmer live in Prague and it's mind blowing on the system. So I really like it. Uh, it is a uh, Atmos 5.2.4 system. Um, in case anyone's curious. So there's five speakers uh, on your ear plane. Uh, there are four Atmos speakers, and then there are two subwoofer channels. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you the subwoofers here. This, this guy little right here is, uh, is from a, uh, uh, a uh, repeat, uh, infrared repeater so that I can use my remote control for the receiver in there. So those are the two front subwoofers. Um, again, these are the VBSS subwoofers. And uh, I'm going to do a little inset video here with my camera or my phone just to kind of give you a closer look. So um, it's an 18 inch subwoofer. Uh, it is a ported cabinet. Obviously it's a slot port and there are two of them. And um, the reason that they're situated kind of weird like this is because um, I actually had these holes cut for a different set of speakers that I had before this. And um, I didn't want to recut all the holes when I got these speakers. So I kind of just made them work. And uh, this arrangement does not affect the sound whatsoever. I have not had any problems. You will notice that it's not perfect and there's some little tweaks I could do you know, anyone who's into home theater would tell you that your front should all be on the same level. Um, my center channel is a bit, little bit lower than my left and right speakers. And uh, I could probably show you if I step back here. Um, it's not quite perfectly centered. I don't notice it. Um, it is there. Um, I have never noticed it, even listening for it. So it doesn't really bother me. But, uh, you know, some little tweaks I could do. So that is the front soundstage. I'll mention now that um, there are the two Atmos uh, top front Atmos speakers. Those are also DIY sound group. Um, they are called Volt 10s, extremely popular um, DIY sound group speakers. They are a 10 inch driver with an integrated, they're a coaxial, so they have uh, an acoustically transparent dust cap. And then there's a 
um, compression driver there in the throat of the of the woofer, so it fires right through. So it is a coaxial driver, um, and uh, these these little ones uh, they they sound okay. They they don't have a lot of bass. They're they're really only good to about oh I'd say 60 or 80 hertz. Beyond that, they drop pretty rapidly without the ported enclosure. Um, but they service me fine for height speakers. I like how they look. I've got them painted to match the wall. This is a matte finish uh, paint on the wall to reduce reflections. Someday I wouldn't mind getting some black velvet curtains to kind of soak up some more light on the edges, but works pretty good as is. Um, I also consider putting a black uh, velvet frame around the white screen, but again, it's that's just little tweaks I could do later on if I'm looking for some kind of project. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the front speakers. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, go back to mobile here and show you. These are my um, my middle height speakers for at Sorry. These, These are, are my middle height speakers for Atmos. These are Mica M8Cs, um, and I'll post post a link to those down below. But uh, they're a solid speaker. Um, they I've listened to two channel audio through them and they sound decent. They've got good bass. Um, they're just an eight inch two way. Um, pretty good full sound, you know. Probably not the same fidelity as the rest of the system, but for height effects, they're plenty adequate, and they're very inexpensive. Um, I, I think the micas bring a lot of value to the table. Um, you know, I could spend twice as much and get, you know, like a Polk. Or I could spend three much, three times as much and get Eclipse and definitely not get two or three times as much of enjoyment out of them, that's for sure. Okay, moving on to the rear speakers. And uh, I'm just going to give you a little idea of what the, you know, what the person sitting here on the couch is is experiencing. You know, obviously that's a sweet spot. These two seats have the best, um, the best seats in the house for sure. Um, the two outer seats, they really get, um, you know, they're close to the rears, so they get a little bit too much of the rears on one side uh, for sure. But, um, you know, it doesn't bother the people that sit there. This is my kids sit on the outside, so they don't really care. And it's still very effective because you can still hear the other side. Um, but yeah, the speaker that they're next to is obviously going to be a little bit louder. Um, and then we also have butt kickers installed in the couches, uh, and those run off of, uh, um, just a Y adapter on the, um, subwoofer channel. Um, and that'll, you know, I don't always have them on, but that's fun. It'll give you a little bit of butt shaking, um, especially when it, when you need to keep things quiet because the kids are sleeping right over there <laughs> you might turn the butt kickers on and turn the subwoofers off to just kind of get a fun effect and still feel like you're experiencing the movie but without as much volume next i want to talk about my end tables they look like regular end tables with drawers but they are in fact actually subwoofers these are both uh additionally uh, VBSS subwoofers. So this end table has the same cubic footage as that box there. The same, the dimensions are a little bit different, but the cubic footage is the same. And those are also, you know, ported at the bottom. They're four inches off the ground. Uh, no, I'm sorry, five inches off the ground because I printed new feet with my 3D printer. Um, so this looks pretty cool and fancy, but honestly, all it is is the standard VBS bo VBSS box, box build, um, as indicated on their website. And then I, I just used two by sixes and stained them, cut them, glued them together, stained them, screwed them on top to give me a surface. And then the fronts are just MDF with a routed edge glued to the front. So it looks kind of fancier than it actually is. And um, I'll show you a couple pictures. I'll paste in here a couple pictures of what this looks like on the bottom side because I don't want to take them out of commission right now. Now, honestly, 
these are great. And these were the first subwoofers I had in the system. Then I added those two 18s later. And I did a bunch of tweaking and a bunch of measuring. And I found that the extra two subwoofers only added at high volumes about 3 dB of additional sound. And honestly, since then, I've kind of left them off and just run with the front subwoofers. So these are still here and I could still use them. I might use them in a different speaker project, not sure. But for now, they're kind of just sitting idle. I might even sell them, who knows. But 418s, again, only two of them are in use right now. And those two will shake this house. You can go upstairs and there's a song. Um, I can't remember the name of the song. I'll post it down below. Um, but you can go upstairs with that song playing down here and you can literally feel the floorboards vibrating and you're moving up and down because the whole the whole upper level of the house is vibrating up and down. It's pretty insane. All right, while I'm mobile, I'm going to take you back into the very ugly back room and I'm going to show you the electronics. These are always a work in progress, guys. And um, right now it's out because I have to rerun this this uh, HDMI cable here. But we've got a Marantz SR6013 uh, Dolby Atmos receiver. Um, very happy with this receiver. Um, does not have the newest specification of HDMI, and that would be a problem for some. I'm running 1080p on my projector right now, and it does support 4K, but not HDR. Um, and my so. My next, syst or my next projector should be supported pretty well with this as well. So I'm not really worried about it. It is a few years old. It's probably seven or eight year old receiver, but it still works well for my needs. These are the subwoofer amplifiers, Behringer iNukes. The 3000 is running the front two subwoofers and the 1000 is running the end table subwoofers. Uh, plenty of power. Um, provided by those amplifiers to run those subwoofers. Uh, then we've got, you know, an Xbox and a PS4. Um, and then that's an old receiver that's just sitting there. And then I do have some um, temperature protection um, that kicks on automatically when I'm on the receiver and does a nice job of keeping things cool. All right, well, that pretty much covers the tour of my system. Um, most of my movie collection is on Blu-rays, 1080p. It's not uh, 4K. I do have quite a few 4K discs because uh, a couple of years ago I started buying 4K versions to get the Blu-ray, even though I'm still 1080p on my projector. Uh, I'm 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 plenty happy with 1080p at this point. Um, my next projector again will support 4K, and. Um, That'll be nice. I'll, you know, obviously use the 4K discs, but it, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with 1080p. I, I uh, don't feel the urge to have to start going up that, down, down that upgrade path yet. Projector is kind of a different deal than TVs. If I was on a big TV, you can really see the difference with TVs. I don't think you see the difference as much on, 4, on projectors. You obviously can see a difference. I'm not saying that you can't. Um, but I think it's less drastic than, uh, than the difference when you're watching it on a TV. Uh, again, these, these speakers are fantastic. Um, I highly recommend if you're looking for a lot of bang for the buck that you keep an eye on the AVS Forums classified page. Uh, if you find somebody that's selling something good um, and it's local to you within a couple hour drive, I would seriously consider that. Um, you can get big discounts that way. Um, that receiver came from Accessories for Less, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, I did buy a Denon uh, home theater receiver from them that was bad. Uh, and I didn't. it took me a week or two to figure that out. And they did give me a little bit of a hassle uh, returning it, but in the end, uh, they did take it back. I just sort of had to spend a bunch of time on their phone with their tech support and and uh, kind of go through the motions in order to get them to to accept the return. But in the end, they did accept that return. 
they credited me and I used that to buy the Morantz, which I'm very happy with. Um, it was reconditioned and it was a huge discount. Um, I'll put the price that I paid for it down below and um, you know what the retail price was. But uh, accessories for less is a good place to buy a receiver if you're looking for bang for the buck. If you're if you're if you got six hundred dollars to spend on a receiver instead of getting a new one, maybe take a look at accessories for less and see what you can get for that same six hundred dollars, and you might find that you can get twice the receiver. You might get more power, more channels. Um, 4K HDR support, you know, those types of upgrades that you wouldn't have gotten with the $600 new receiver. Um, you know, and then like Black Friday, there's usually some good deals. Um, my first home theater receiver in this home theater was a um, uh, Denon AVR X3600H, uh, and that was a good receiver, and I got a good deal on it on uh, Black Friday. And then I ended up selling it to a friend of mine, and he's still using it to this day. And that, that was a that's a good budget home theater receiver. So um, you can find some deals out there, but um, I wouldn't be afraid of the reconditioned market for electronics, and I wouldn't be afraid of the used market for speakers because that's a great way to get a great speaker at a big discount. A lot of value there. Um, and we're back to <laughs> coming back around to this is a budget home theater and hi-fi. Uh, channel, so I'm hoping to share some of my um, experience with y'all uh, regarding uh, what to buy and where. Um, brands Denon, Yamaha, Sony, I think they're all decent brands for budget home theater. Um, I, I, I'm just a Marantz guy, and Marantz tends to be a little bit more expensive than Denon, so I if you're looking for something budget, I'd probably steer you towards Denon over Morant. Um, if it were me, you know, starting from scratch, or if it's you starting from scratch and me giving you advice, I would probably steer you toward Denon or Yamaha. I think those are the two better, better brands of the low end of the consumer receiver market. Best bang for your buck. There's certainly better stuff out there. I would love to drop five grand on Emotiva stuff. I would love to drop five grand on Anthem stuff. Um, that's not within my budget, and again, that's not really the, 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 um, the mission for this channel, so. Anyways, uh, I hope I've uh, kinda shared some cool stuff with you guys today. Um, check out DIY Sound Group. They got some really cool stuff. Uh, and if you're handy at all, building a speaker box is not difficult. It requires a circular saw, uh, a jigsaw, optionally a router, uh, and four uh, clamps plus some glue. That You can build a speaker box with those tools. It doesn't require a lot of expert cabinetry experience. It doesn't require a lot of specialty tools. Circular saw, jigsaw or router, um, uh, yeah, jigsaw or router, and then and then your um, your wood clamps, long wood clamps, big enough to to you know uh, glue up a box this big. Um, yeah, uh, check down below for some links. Uh, if you have any questions about my system or uh, you want to ask for some advice on what you should do in a certain situation, I'm happy to address those. I try to I try to respond to every uh, comment on my channel that, you know, if, if things take off, that might not be possible forever, but um, I try to be as responsive as I can. Sometimes it takes me a week or two to get back to you on a particular comment, so please uh, have some patience, but happy to answer any questions that you might have. Please post them below. Um, and thanks for watching. If you would please like and comment, subscribe, I would really appreciate that. It helps the channel a lot. And uh, that's it. Uh, have fun and see you on the next one.